In this video, I'm going to teach you how to perform the FAST exam. There are many approaches to generating the best images, but I'm going to teach you a simple, repeatable approach that I learned during my CEUS Independent Practitioner training. Let's start with the right upper quadrant. That's where you're most likely to find free fluid. Hold the probe at the level of the xiphoid and move it anteriorly and posteriorly until you visualize the kidney. Here's what that looks like on the screen. You see the kidney coming into view there. Once you get the best kidney you can find, stop at that level. As you make your AP move, don't let your probe get away from being parallel from the floor. Here I'm tilting it up slightly. That's not what you want. You want to be nice and parallel to the floor, just like I am right here. Another common mistake is allowing the probe to follow the curve of the patient's body like I'm doing here. Practice keeping the probe nice and parallel to the floor. Our second movement is to move the probe in the longitudinal direction while not changing its AP position at all. The goal here is to see the hepatorenal interface. On the screen, you see as I move towards the head, I get a better view of the diaphragm. And as I move down towards the feet, I see the interface. And there's the tip of the liver. That's the caudal end of the interface. We need to see that. Now that I've found my interface, I need to sweep. Here's what a sweep looks like. I keep my contact point constant, and I tilt the probe in each direction, anteriorly and posteriorly. Before I sweep, I optimize my depth. Here's what it looks like on the screen. You need to see the kidney disappear in both directions. Don't sweep like this. Here I'm not keeping my contact point constant. I call this painting because it looks like I'm painting a fence with the probe. Here you can see free fluid in the right upper quadrant along the interface between the liver and the kidney. Here's a video of the same thing. Now let's do the left upper quadrant. The procedure is basically the same. Here I'm making my AP move until I get the largest possible view of the kidney I can get. Now I'm making my longitudinal move to find the interface in the diaphragm. Now I'm sweeping. It's often the case that you can't see the whole interface at once because of the rib shadows, so you'll have to do overlapping sweeps. You also have to sweep the diaphragm. Here you'll see the kidney come into view with my AP move. There it is. In the left upper quadrant, it's really important to see the diaphragm from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. As you can see in this picture, you often only see the fluid underneath the diaphragm. Here you notice that as the patient breathes, the diaphragm moves in and out of view. You have to be patient. To review, first you'll make a PA move to make the kidney look as big as possible. Next, you'll make a longitudinal move to see the entire interface. Then, you'll very slowly sweep the entire interface. You might have to do several overlapping sweeps at different positions in the longitudinal plane if you can't see the entire interface in one view because of the rib shadows. Let's look for free fluid in the pelvis. Position the probe about one centimeter above the symphysis and look right down at the patient's feet. Then slowly sweep back until you see the bladder appear and completely disappear. Fluid usually appears behind the bladder or between the uterus and the rectum in the female patient. Here's the uterus coming into view here and disappearing. Some final reminders. You have to see the whole interface on both sides and the diaphragm in the left upper quadrant to call a conclusive negative. Remember, FAST can only see free fluid, not solid organ or hollow viscous injury. So when in doubt, use your clinical judgment. Thanks for listening. Now you know the basics, it's time to go to the bedside and start practicing.